Hey there, this is your host, Dr. Lori Friesen, and you're listening to episode number 181 of Beginning Teacher Talk. Just because you're a beginning elementary teacher, there is no need for you to struggle like one. I'm dedicated to being the mentor for you that I wish I had when I first started teaching. In this podcast, we talk about all of the -the behind-the-scenes stuff about teaching you really need to know but didn't learn when you were in university. And we share the most amazing resources, tips, and strategies out there so you can become the teacher you've always dreamed of being. Let's start the show. Well, hey there, my friends. Welcome back to another episode of the podcast. I hope that wherever you are in the world, you're enjoying some gorgeous spring weather. I love the spring. In Lexington, Kentucky, it's when all the baby horses are out in the pastures and the flowers are blooming, the cherry blossoms are blooming. It is a spectacular time of the year. I absolutely love it. So wherever you are in the world, I hope you're getting out and enjoying some spring weather. And you might even be very close to finishing the school year if you're still teaching. Oh my gosh, we're so close to the end. Depending on where you teach, May is a very common month for a lot of uh, states to be finished with teaching for the year. But in Canada, where I'm originally from, we go until at least mid-June. So wherever you are, I hope that you're enjoying the weather and that you're starting to wind things down and spend some time really enjoying your students. I know it feels like a lot of pressure towards the end of the school year to make sure you finish strong, but at the same time, take that time to enjoy these kiddos because when you say goodbye to them, some of them you won't see again for a very long time, if at all. So enjoy them. All right. I know that you're going to love this episode of the podcast, episode number 181, because today I have a very special treat for you. I'm going to be interviewing a very special lady by the name of Ashley Odell. So some of you might know Ashley if you're a member of our Beginning Teacher Talk private Facebook group, because she's very active inside that group, and she's a very generous supporter inside our group. I just love her positive contributions, and I'm convinced that we have the most supportive, amazing group of educators on the internet for new teachers inside our private Facebook group. So if you haven't joined, come join us. I just love you ladies, mostly ladies. We have a few gentlemen in there. Um, And Ashley is also a Ready for School Academy member. So you might have met her if you joined the Academy last year. So last week, I interviewed Tylee Matheny, who's a second year teacher, and she shared some of her best tips and advice. So if you haven't listened to that episode, you might want to go back and check that one out as well. And today I'm interviewing Ashley to ask her to share her advice as a first year teacher for other new teachers, because we all know that the best people to learn from are those who have come before us and learned what we wanted to learn. So I know you're going to love Ashley's bubbly, positive spirit and that you're going to get a lot of value from what she has to share. So if you're just graduating and you're getting ready to teach your first year, or you're like Ashley and you've taught for a year or maybe two, and you'd love to know how you can improve specific areas of your teaching, especially classroom management, then I know you're going to love what she has to share. So I won't make you wait any longer. Let's dive in and welcome Ashley to the show. Well, hey there, Ashley. Welcome to the Beginning Teacher Talk podcast. I'm so excited to have you here as a guest today. Thanks, Lori. It's super exciting to be here. Well, before we dive in, I know that a lot of our listeners don't know you yet. Maybe they've met you in our Beginning Teacher Talk Facebook group. They might have gotten to know you a little bit when they went through the academy, but just start by telling us a little bit about you. Maybe your name, where you live, and what grade you teach, and what you're teaching you're currently in. Sure. Sure. Um, My name is Ashley Odell, and I'm actually teaching at Bloomfield, Missouri. It's this little bitty town. Um, Uh I'm teaching third grade, and it's my first year of teaching. Oh, my gosh. First year (laughs) during COVID. That sounds like so much fun. (laughs) It has been fun. Yeah, I'm sure it has been. I mean, you have been so positive and so vibrant in all of your comments in our Facebook group. I know that you've been really trying some creative things and you are really, I think, one of those teachers whose heart is fully in it. So I've loved watching your journey and you have a family of your own. You have kids of your own, don't you? Yes, I have three little girls and the oldest is four. Wow. (laughs) 
<laughs> so being a full-time beginning teacher on top of being a mom full-time, that's got to be a little bit for you to handle, but congratulations. You're almost at the end of your first year. And for those of you who are listening, Ashley joined the Academy last year. So it would have been in the spring of 2021. So I'm curious, Ashley, why did you decide to join the Academy? Well, I almost didn't join. Mm-hmm because it costs money and I am really big on finding everything I need for free on the internet um, just by digging. And honestly, I really just couldn't find exactly what I needed anywhere else. I knew how important it was to plan ahead Mm -hmm. and I knew which or that I would need routines to implement, but I wasn't sure which routines I wanted. I had no idea where to begin teaching routines and procedures at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. And your message and podcast just really resonated with me. And I wanted a guide I could check off and knew for sure I wasn't forgetting anything. Yeah, it's so interesting because I remember last year when I opened the doors to the Academy, it was so fun because so many people said, I feel like I already know you because we've been talking, you know, kind of sharing stories for almost a year on the podcast already. And when I meet so many of my Academy members, they're like, oh, and I remember you talking about this. And it's so fun to hear you say that because I sometimes feel like I'm just speaking into a void, but it's so nice to know there's teachers on the other end that are getting some help and some support. So, and I know there are probably thousands of other teachers listening to this podcast right now who are thinking the same thing you did, that I really don't want to spend the money. And I totally understand that feeling of wanting to just figure it all out by yourself, because I was the same way when I landed my first teaching contract, I wanted to just figure it all out myself. But I also know that if someone would have just shown me what I needed to do and how to do it. I think we know what to do a lot of times, but we don't know how to do it before that first year. I wouldn't have struggled as much as I did. And I know there are a lot of other teachers who've joined the Academy who did try to figure it all out on their own in the first year. And then they ended up joining the Academy the second year, because there are just so many things that we find are harder to figure out than we think they are. So I'm so happy that we found our way to each other because nothing fills my heart or makes me happier than knowing that I've helped another teacher to reduce that stress and that overwhelm that comes with just not knowing what they should be doing to feel truly prepared for your first year of teaching. So what were you struggling with? What were you trying to figure out on your own before you joined the academy? Oh, I mean, it was just a struggle, just juggling everything. There was so much and you get so much information in school And, Mm -hmm. you know, just by looking on what you need to set up in a classroom, such as management and the spaces, but nobody actually explains how to do that. They tell you what to do. There's tons of stuff out there telling you what to do, but nobody tells you how. And I need examples. I wanted a step-by-step process that I could follow so that I knew for sure that I wasn't missing anything obvious because I did not want my first year teaching to be like when I go to the grocery store without a list, I'll always forget something. (laughs) And it's usually something very important. Oh my gosh. I love that you said that. I can so relate to that. And Google is amazing, right? Like you can find so many things out there, but the sheer volume of information can be overwhelming. And you're right. Knowing what to do is one thing, but knowing how to do things in a smart and a streamlined way is a totally different ball game. And Again, I just love what you said about not wanting your first year of teaching to be like when you go to the grocery store without a list. And because you're just like me, I'm going to forget something and it's usually important. So if I'm going there for tacos, I forget the tacos. Like I'm telling you, I'm that bad. (laughs) So how did you feel once you completed the academy? Um, Honestly, I was just super excited to start teaching. I mean, all the nerves and the overwhelm about what I would be doing my first few weeks of school were almost completely gone because I had concrete evidence that I was actually prepared and I was going to know what to do. Doesn't that feel good when you have that plan right in front of you and you're like, okay, I know what I'm doing. I know exactly what I need to do, especially in those first few weeks of school, they can be really overwhelming because you don't know what to do. Like we keep talking about to set yourself up for success. So I'm so glad that your overwhelm and your nerves were replaced with excitement once you felt so much more prepared. And once you had a clear plan, I think that's just being a teacher. I mean, we're all like that. Once we have a plan and we, we know our roadmap and we've got it all mapped out. It's like, okay, I've got this under control. (laughs) 
<laughs> so what did you feel like you have more control over once you got through the academy and you'd completed all the work? Uh, I definitely felt like I had a lot more control about how my routines and procedures would be implemented Mm because that was something I was really worried about was like, how do you even begin with this? Yeah. I remember when I was in my first year of teaching and everyone kept saying, yeah, teach your routines. And I'm like, what does that mean? Like, especially during the first few weeks, I kept trying to like peek into other teachers classroom because they were like, oh, teaching all my routines and procedures and oh, it's exhausting. And I'm like, what are they doing? Because I kept trying to peek in to see how they were doing things because I knew that I was supposed to be doing all that, but I just didn't really know how to set myself up for success. I just didn't know. I mean, I knew I wanted to get to know my students, but I think I underestimated, maybe this was true for you too, but I completely underestimated how important those first few weeks were in terms of establishing all the routines and procedures. And so I really struggled that whole first year because I didn't set things up properly from the start. And so all year I was trying to figure out the best way of doing things. So it would have been so much easier if I had implemented my routines, even if it wasn't the same one I was going to use all year, if I had implemented something to start with the way I should have, it would have been so much easier to then, you know, tweak it and change it a little bit throughout the year. So which areas do you feel more prepared for now that you've completed the academy? I mean, honestly, the academy made me feel more prepared in all areas, including things that weren't even in the academy, like specific grade level content and planning. Because after going through the academy and being prepared to meet my class, prepared to teach my routines and having my space all set up for learning and success, that freed my time up at the beginning of the year. So I was Mm -hmm. able to plan and do all the basic, like the beginning of the year things and all the paperwork, you know, without feeling like I was drowning and just figuring out the basics. Yeah, that makes sense. Because you've already learned how to meet your class. You've learned how to teach your routines. You've done all of that. And so it's interesting because at the beginning of the year, we just don't realize how much we can and should be doing in terms of laying the foundation for our classrooms during the summer before we start teaching so that we are free to attend all of the curriculum and the PD that our schools throw at us just before the year starts. So for those of you who are just graduating from college right now, and you're getting ready to start teaching, or you're thinking about setting up your own classroom in the fall, what they don't tell us is that really the first two or three weeks before you start teaching and while you're trying to teach your first few weeks, there is so much PD thrown at you. And, but when you have that time and space to think through how you're going to do everything in your classroom before all of that starts, you are like Ashley said, much more mentally free to handle all of the things that come up for you in those first few weeks of school that can otherwise feel completely overwhelming. Cause <laughs> there's just no busy, like beginning of the school, you're busy, right? <laughs> it's crazy. Right. So what was your biggest aha moment when you took the Academy? I'm super curious. Um, I, I think one thing is that I am not the most creative person. I'm able to copy things, but I'm not very good at coming up with my own ideas. So I was worried about not knowing which procedures and routines to implement And when I started working through Academy and started using your examples that were already there for me, I realized that I was able to come up with my own stuff. Mm. So the ideas in the Academy gave me my own ideas and I was able to envision myself actually using those ideas. And it was very inspiring. Yeah. It's so much more fun to be able to look at how someone else has done it all. So you, A, realize, okay, I am on the right path and B, so you can add your own twist and you can make things your own. So you aren't starting from scratch. It's so much easier. And that's exactly what I did as a new teacher as well. I mean, I remember I would look at examples of other teachers and how they did things and put my own spin on it. I wish I'd had it all in one place and that someone was walking me through it, but I had to like hunt and pack and find everything from other teachers over the years and make it my own, which was so much fun and so empowering once I figured out, oh, okay, that's how someone else has done it. Now I get to just put my own twist on it. So I love seeing the creative twist that teachers put on all my materials. It's so much fun to watch you soar and make you make all of this your own. It's so much fun for me. So what was your favorite lesson inside the Academy? Oh, I think my favorite lesson, like the most fun was setting up um, the space 
spaces in my classroom, I drew probably a million different diagrams of my room Um, and it was so much fun. But I mean, the most useful lesson that I couldn't have made it without was the lesson on creating classrooms, classroom routines and actually teaching them. Yeah. It's, it's fun because setting up your first classroom is so much like setting up your first apartment or buying your first home, right? Like getting to finally decorate and bring your vision to life. And I remember seeing pictures of your classroom in our beginning teacher talk private Facebook group and how you, you, I think you posted a picture of your succulents bulletin board. And I'm like, Oh, that is gorgeous. And we had like hundreds of teachers commenting on it. It was so pretty. So when it comes to creating a space of your own, especially when you've been dreaming of being a teacher for such a long time, it's so much fun to bring it to life. And by the way, Ashley, you actually inspired the classroom theme that I created this year. You're going to love it. It's, it is Saul Succulent's theme. I think you're going to absolutely love it. It's so pretty. It just looks just like your classroom. (laughs) I love plants. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You're, I remember that bulletin board. It was so pretty. And yes, that step-by-step guidance in terms of like how to create and teach your classroom routines is so helpful when you've never done it before. So very, very helpful, I think, for lots of teachers. Hey there, teachers. I have a very special invitation for you. You are invited to my free masterclass, Four Secrets to Success in Your First Years of Teaching, where you're going to get a step-by-step plan that walks you through what you need to do this summer so you can be truly ready for the school year. And when you show up live and stay until the end of this masterclass, you're going to get a back-to-school resource bundle, including some super cute classroom decor, a one-hour PD certificate, and you're going to get an exclusive invitation to my pop-up Facebook group. And you really don't want to miss this pop-up group because when you participate, you will get access to daily giveaways of some of my favorite books for the first weeks of school. And you'll be entered into a draw for a brand new MacBook Air computer. So to get access to all of this goodness and so you don't miss out on any of the fun, go to drlauriefriesen.com forward slash masterclass to save your seat now. That's drlauriefriesen.com forward slash masterclass. D-R-L-O-R-I-F-R-I-E-S-E-N.com forward slash masterclass. I can't wait to see you there. So I'm super curious, what would you say to someone who's on the fence about joining the academy? Um, I think if you really want to be prepared and you are actually willing to go through the entire academy and use it, Mm -hmm. then it will change everything for you. It takes work. It takes a lot of work. Mm -hmm. You don't do it for us, you know, and it's going to take some of your summer But if this is going to be your first year of teaching, I promise it's worth your summer. Mm -hmm. You do not want to go in with nothing. Uh, I can't even imagine that first week of first (laughs) month of school was insane. And that's with me preparing all summer. Mm -hmm. So, and if it's not your first year and you're thinking of joining because you feel overwhelmed and don't know what to do, then it's probably also worth your summer. (laughs) Yeah. It's so interesting because I hear so many teachers posting in or see them posting in Facebook groups. And they're saying things like, Oh, you know, just relax. You, you know, you don't have to do anything in the summer. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, please don't do that. Please don't because it'll save your bacon, like literally in the fall. And I, I love what you said about actually doing the work because yes, you, if you're willing to invest some of your time to do that foundational work during the summer, it pays off big time throughout the year because you're not trying to figure out how to streamline and run your classroom throughout the year when you're already super busy. You've already kind of nailed the basics. And I often compare becoming a teacher to learning to drive a car. I think you've probably heard me say that on the podcast before, but what just came to mind when you said that about actually doing the work, I was reminded of when I was teaching our youngest son, Kai, to learn how to drive. Your kids are still too young to, you don't have to deal with this yet, but (laughs) when he was first learning, we we stuck to the side streets in the quieter neighborhoods as he learned where the turn signals were and how the, how to work the lights and how to check his mirrors, all that basic foundational stuff that you absolutely need when you're learning to drive. But if we had started his driving practice on the freeway, can you imagine? I mean, he would have just crashed and gotten into a horrible accident because he wouldn't have had any of those basics down first, it would be way too overwhelming to go that fast and to be expected to react that quickly and make those decisions 
when he didn't know what he was doing. And I think it's sometimes we think teaching is going to just be super fun that we'll be able to get out there on the freeway and be free and go fast. But when we don't have those foundational skills nailed or at least thought through and practiced a little bit, it's so much harder than we think it's going to be. So taking that time during the summer to do the work that's going to give you a solid foundation when it comes to running your classroom can save you from literally crashing and burning in the middle of the school year. So thank you so much for saying that, Ashley, and for reiterating that, yeah, the the academy is going to be very helpful for you, but you have to be willing to do the work and you have to be willing to take the time to go through it. So thank you so much for coming onto the podcast today, Ashley, and for sharing your experience with us. Is there anything else you wanted to say or to leave us with today? Um, I mean, I just want to tell you, thank you again. I I know I've told you thank you before, but I can't even imagine what my first year of teaching would have been like without you. It was a lifesaver. Oh my gosh. That is so sweet of you, Ashley. Thank you so much for taking the time to come onto the podcast today. I know how busy you are and I really appreciate you and your time. Thank you, Lori. So there you have it, my friends. I really hope you enjoyed this conversation with Ashley as much as I did today and that you were able to get some good takeaways about what you can do inside your classroom. And if you're curious about the Ready for School Academy and you want to learn more, make sure you've signed up for my masterclass, Four Secrets to Success in Your First Years of Teaching. Again, you can save your seat at drlauriefriesen.com forward slash masterclass, dr. L-O-R-I-F-R-I-E-S-E-N.com forward slash masterclass. I hope to see you inside our pop-up group that is part of that masterclass and to see you on the masterclass. And until then, have a fabulous week. And remember, just because you're a beginning elementary teacher, there's no need for you to struggle like one. Bye for now.